All right. So any disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? Seeing none. Okay. We have new members. And Andy Mark is not here, but Pam Mugford, if that's pronounced right, Mugford, mm -hmm. is here. Um, and uh, welcome. Uh, we, you can see the names. You should have to go in meeting and we tell our names and who we are, but you can already see that. So we're good. So, um, anyways, uh, boy, I'm going to put you on the spot. One tell us about yourself. Mm, sure. Um, so, my family and I just moved to Stratford just over a year ago, um, and we're loving it here. Um, I have two boys. Uh, well, my husband and I have two boys, and they are six and eight years old. Um, and in the last five years, they were both diagnosed with autism. Um, and then in doing a lot of research on autism, um, I got a diagnosis with autism, uh, Asperger's myself, two years ago. Um, and so I'm, you know, aware of a lot of um, the, the challenges that are out there for people with autism. I've also done some disability studies, um, and I'm currently studying uh, grief, uh, death and dying, um, as a future vocation, uh, working with people who are um, either dying or who are dealing with the effects of grief and dying. Um, and I do want to focus that in the area of disability in the future as well. Um, and so, yeah, thank you for welcoming me here. Looking All forward right. to participating. Glad to have you. Excellent. And right. thank you for thanking thank us. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Yeah. We should each introduce ourselves. Okay, you want to do that? Sure. Uh, why don't we go? Well, I don't know if everybody's screen's the same. So Bonnie, since you said it, why don't you introduce yourself first then I'll just call a name and then you introduce yourself so you don't all have random people talking. Hey, Bonnie. I'm Councillor Bonnie Henderson. I've been on the Accessibility Committee 15 years. Welcome, Pam. And um, my granddaughter is gonna be just turned 22 in December and she has autism too. Diane? Hi, Pam. Uh, I have MS. I'm in an electric wheelchair and uh, have done a lot of accessibility work in, uh, over the years and a lot of uh, advocating. I'm also an ovarian cancer survivor. And at this at this time, I have a broken left leg, and I'm, I, I uh, have my wheelchair outstretched, and I was telling Dan, I feel like I'm driving a Sherman tank around the house, <laughs> trying to not bump into things. So, and I've I've been on the committee. Um, this will be my third year. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, Dan? Dan Sykes, Development Coordinator, um, City of Stratford, Engineering Thank Department. You. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Hey. Hi, Caitlin. I work for Community Living Stratford and Area, um, and I've been a member of the committee for about six years. And Casey, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Pam. We've been emailing a little bit. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm the advisory committee secretary for all of the city's advisory committee. Nice to meet you finally. Judy? Hi, I'm Judy. Um, I'm an amputee with other asserted issues. Um, I've been on the committee, I don't know, six or seven years. Right, so welcome to you. <laughs> Roger. Hi, Pam. Uh, my name's Roger. My disability street cred is I'm a paraplegic. I use a manual wheelchair um, for the past 15 years or so. And uh, I'm a <clears throat> citizen volunteer with the community. Welcome. Mm. Thank you. Lauren. Hi, Pam. Um, sorry, Pam. I got. Um, 
knocked off the Zoom while you were introducing yourself, so I'll have to go back and watch that after. But um, this is my fourth year on the committee, and um, I have learned a tremendous amount um, being on the committee. It's very, um, very informative and rewarding. So welcome. Hope you enjoy it. And I'm Peter, and spinal cord injury. 40 years experience of being in a wheelchair, so I'm old. That's all. <laughs> I'm, I'm a new grandpa, so there you go. Um, and Tatiana, I don't know if she's there, but she's not this, no, she's that city clerk sign there. Okay, so now that we introduce ourselves, oh yeah, welcome. Back. So uh, now it's up to Tatiana or Casey to do the election. We'll, we'll do that. So we'll start with nominations for a chair for this year for 2022. Peter obviously is our current chair and Diane was last year's vice chair. So any nominations for chair, Roger? I'd like to nominate Peter for chair again this year. Are there any other nominations for chair? Okay. okay, if there are no further nominations, I just have to call a motion to close nomination. A mover and a seconder to close nominations. Okay, Diane? Yep. Peter, are you willing to let your name stand for chair? For one more year. For one more year. Okay. All right, now a motion to elect Peter as the 2022 Chair of Accessibility Committee. Diane and a seconder. Roger, all in favor? Awesome. Okay, moving on to Vice Chair for 2022. Are there any nominations for Vice Chair? Judy? I'd like to nominate Roger for Vice Chair. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Okay, seeing none, a motion to close nominations. Judy and Lori. Roger, are you willing to let your name stand for vice chair? Yes, thank you, okay. Judy. Okay, all You're right, welcome. a motion to elect Roger as the vice chair for 2022. Peg, Diane, all in favor? Awesome, thanks everybody. It's all yours, Peter. Okay, thank you again. Uh, so we have an adoption of the previous minutes. So I wanna make a motion, hope everybody's read them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll make the motion. I didn't see your hand, you got the layer behind you. <laughs> but that's okay. Diane, making the motion. Uh, seconder. Uh, okay. Ooh. Any discussion or changes or omissions? I just wondered what a fog was. I don't know if that's just a spelling mistake, but it was in the uh, section of the, uh, the, What's it called? That access key? Yeah, it should be FOB. F O B. Oh, okay. Yeah, it should have been FOB. I wondered what I was using the past year. <laughs> like, what? I'll change that. that uh, I don't know. I was just looking at it. Um, I had to start. Oh, it's on the uh, second page of the minutes. It's the last report. Okay. Thank you. Oh, it says say FOB. It does say fog. Yeah. The question was, what is a fog? Is it stands for something? Is, is that it... an acronym, Dan, for something? I'm I don't not, know. I don't know. I just know it's an expensive thing. <laughs> 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 Having lost uh, one before and getting a new one, yeah. They're, they're not cheap. Care to share? <laughs> My car. <laughs> It's kind of necessary evil. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, Dan, you're on. I am. Welcome I am. Well, welcome all. 2022. Um, 
I'll just go through the notes that I had from the previous meeting. Uh, and suffice to say, no change to Lakeside Drive um, point about the accessible parking space. Um, we can remove the item about uh, Redford Crescent. There will be some minor tweaking in here just to, to shore up that area, but it should be essentially complete. Uh, there's no change to the Queen Street project. It continues on and will probably wrap up, I think, March or April of this year. Um, the TJ Dolan, um, again, there's some just finer tweaks that are final tweaks that have to happen in the spring. Uh, St. Vincent uh, Railway Crossing. I'm going to check on the timing of that one, but it, I think it was slated to be fixed this year. But I'll, I'll check with Public Works and see if they've heard from uh, CN. Uh, the Wellington Street repairs, again, there's no change there. We'll take another walk uh, in the spring. The curb cut uh, across Tom Patterson Theatre. Uh, again, that, that will be done this year. We just simply ran out of time last year. Um, we can strike the comment about the curb cuts on private property. Um, following up um, with uh, Nathan Bottoma today, he's tried a couple more times to uh, uh, to touch base with the key to access, and I think I think that initiative has has, has ceased to exist. Uh, he didn't get any answer back at all, so I think we're just going to let that that lapse. We're not we're not going to. Uh, uh, keep going with that that program and that is what I have for the notes from before <clears throat> um, the projects that we have ongoing for this year uh, will be the Argyle and Mackenzie reconstructions the uh, Huron Street uh, first phase will take us from the bridge to John Street uh, asphalt resurfacing only, uh, we will be doing Lorne Ave from Home Street to Romeo Street this year. And the last one, if we get funding, uh, we will be doing Ontario Street, again, just asphalt only, from Burrett to the city limits. So that'll be much like what we did with uh, Romeo Street uh, last year. So are there any questions about... Um, any of that? I have one. Uh, the Redford, that's going to be now community services? Um, well, yeah, as far as the, the cults or the crossing goes, we'll finish up what we need to do. The going forward for the pathway going in, I think that's supposed to be 2023. I think right. community services, because they were going to time it with the, the playground equipment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is the Mackenzie Street a sure go ahead? As far as I know, <laughs> I know we said that last year, but I think this year, yes, I think it really is. Yes. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, last year it came in $2 million over budget, so I had to. I know. Yeah. I'm wondering, Peter, if we should talk about the Almond Arena parking when Dan. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. I well, think. Was Taylor going to join in for that one? Yeah, he's just joined in now. Um, oh, has that, he? Okay. That's on the agenda for nine. So, uh, do you need to be here, Dan, for that? Is that? Uh, or um, I can be. Um, I can. Um, I can jump to. Uh, what well, do you want to go to section six now? If there's not nothing else. Six is already you covered. Oh, okay. So uh, there's only the uh, site. Plan. I'll actually uh, site plan. I just wanted to um, to note, um, as far as feedback goes, uh, the Dickens Place, um, the site plan that you guys reviewed and made comment. Actually, a couple of the recommendations were taken on and uh, put into the uh, the new drawings. The um, accessible um, parking spaces. They will now have an accessible doorway very close to where the parking spaces are. And there will be ramps going down and it will be an accessible um, uh, door. So good, uh, good job for that. And also um, there will be an accessible parking space in the underground parking lot as well. So 
All right, good. All right. All right, so that, uh, Roger, you don't have anything more to report for uh, State Plan? I don't think they had any, right? No, <clears throat> no, we did provide feedback to, on the accessible washroom project at the boathouse. So just to follow up with that, we did provide that to uh, Zach Gribble. Um, so there's a note about that, but that's it. Okay, good. <clears throat> Okay, transit, we have none. And so now we can go to the parking at the Almond Arena. Now, I want to introduce that because we did get the plans to the subcommittee. I did mention the parking, and I do remember uh, adding it in my comments over to the staff. Whether they got reported or not, I don't know. But I was concerned, and I remember because I took my kid there, I went played my son played hockey and went to the game. I stopped going to the game because the parking was so bad. I was assured that that would be changed and it wasn't. Now uh, Judith, uh, Bonnie found out that there is no parking there. I haven't gone in a while because of that. There's absolutely no parking there. Is that right, Bonnie? There's no accessible parking across because that's festival now. All of that's the festival parking. Although, having said that, this side is open all year to um, anybody to be able to use it from the public. And the back parking lot is only available once the theater's down. Yeah, so that's not acceptable. I, I remember being adamant because we had changed the parking uh, to go across the street, which I wasn't crazy about, across Moran's from the other side. We had renovated and then we knew that Tom Patterson eventually was coming in and uh, actually this committee and I think Roger you were involved in designing that uh, you and me were part of that and other people as well so I remember seeing the plans but we were worried about the trees before we were worried about the parking it is a problem at the almond so we need to get that fixed yes Bonnie oh I went down and looked at it and I'm wondering like it's probably safer for people to use the parking lot that's where the almond arena is and there's a ramp and everything there like why don't we just make more accessible parking spots in there if we can yeah. like one on the left side so if you put one on the right side and maybe even that little indent that's there like just an idea because there's already the ramp there and everything and then nobody has to cross the road there was one there, or maybe yeah. two, and it always got piled with snow. It always was full. I had to go an hour and a half early to a game, and I still wouldn't get that spot. So there needs to be more than two. It, it needs to uh, fit the accessibility requirements for that arena. Now, that might be tough to do, but it's really, really impossible to go to a game. So, Taylor, are you here for that? Hi, Taylor. Welcome. <laughs> Are you here for that purpose regarding the parking in the Almond? Uh, at this point, it'd be preliminary discussion. Um, as Bonnie mentioned, um, there was an increased amount of accessible parking spots introduced when the Tom Patterson went in, but they were put in as part of the uh, facilities parking area. So there's an extra three or four spaces. I think there's five or six spaces in their, their parking lot now. Um, Bonnie and I briefly discussed beforehand about the accessible parking that used to be in the road right away. And I can't find any reference on my end of where that used to be. I've looked through a few files, including the previous site plan. I haven't, I haven't seen that. If there's a way for me to get that kind of converse, confirmation, it kind of changes how I would look into this or approach it just because um, effectively what it would mean we've removed what was already existing. Did you ask David St. Louis? Because maybe he or organize that yeah that could be it does community services right right but i know we had two on this side they were what do you call that um parallel parking and then in the parking lot it was like i don't think they were angle or perpendicular but and so they were back to back then we put a little walkway from the Kiwanis parking lot through the other parking lot to the road roger Hey Taylor, um, you can do a Google Street View and then you can do the drop down of where it says when the image was taken 
And there's one from July 2016 that shows um, the accessible parking signs out front across for, on uh, Amaranth Drive. And then you'll also see the curb cut sidewalk that then went to the parking lot um, and we put two accessible spots um, to the, I believe they were both to the, uh, that would be north of the curb cut. Yeah, and there was one on the almond too, so. I've seen it on the street for me too, so I was going to suggest the same. Taylor? No, thanks, Roger. The, um, I didn't think to look for the uh, the actual signs. I was looking for pavement marking of sorts, so um, thanks for that verification. Um, so is there anything we can do to uh, get some parking? I agree with Bonnie. I think it's important to be on the site. Can we extend that and get some remarkings? Because it's impossible to see a game. Yeah, uh, from this point, so um, I can have our staff look into uh, if that's a potential at its current location. Um, the slope of the street's a bit much there, so I do have some hesitations, and it might take away from some parking spots. We'll have to do a bit of analysis for that, but uh, uh, because it's already existing and we've taken that away, I'll, I'll look at our end, at least for the road right of way. If the intent's the almond, then um, or the preference, then that should be approached through David St. Louis because that would be his parking facility. Okay, so um, how do we do that? Because I don't want to keep waiting for another meeting and then have David come and all this. Is there a way that you guys can arrange something? Yeah, I mean, like, well, from our end, if if that area in front of Moran's is still the desired location, then I can have my staff look into um, the implications of reintroducing the accessible parking there. But if your desire is to actually have the facility within the parking lot of the Almond Arena, it'd be best approached to David. So I guess the question is really from you, how would you like me to proceed? And what are you looking to get out of this? So what it was previously, there was some on site in the Almond, there was a couple there, but because there wasn't enough there, so I was going way back to when B. Jordan was working and we were working on that and she got sick and she couldn't continue. Across was across the street from Moran's was the uh, added spots because the almond wasn't enough. And since there was one kind of existing there, we just added to it and put a curb cut in there. So Roger, I don't know, or anybody else, what's your feeling on that? Yeah, Roger. Yeah, I would say, so I'm looking at the Google Street View. So there's two in the parking lot, like the, the arena parking lot behind. Um, so we could add a third one there. So we could have three there. And then on Moran's Drive, you could turn three um, spots for standard vehicles, turn those three into two accessible spots. And then that would give us five accessible spots within, I don't know, 100 meters of the accessible entrance. And if we look at the arena that we built from new, say out at the complex, we have we have many more than five spots. Um, so five would kind of be the minimum that we would want near that door, especially because it does get busy on game days, um, let's say for the Warriors um, or for any game, but uh, we should make it as easy as possible for people, um, that need accessibility to come and watch hockey. Yeah. I literally stopped going because of the parking. Bonnie? I'd like to make a motion that we have Taylor Crinklaw and um, David St. Louis um, look at what the best idea would be. And Roger, thanks for that tip. That's great to know that. It can go back like that in other years. Learn something new every day. Okay, so uh, the official motion is. Casey, did you get that motion? Yeah, so you're going to request um, an analysis of on street parking on Marantz, converting the three to two, and then adding one for a total of three in the parking lot. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that one? Peg? 
Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, all right, Taylor, with that. Um, do you know how to go about it or Dan? Either one? Yeah, Taylor, I know where Taylor lives. <laughs> Parking spots are there in Serena. Does anybody know here? Sorry, what's that, Bonnie? Does anybody know how many parking spots are actually in the arena? I did a quick glance before this meeting and I would guesstimate uh, close to 100. Looking at our FAM DM mail, be four spots. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and right now there's none. Is that right? There's one. One. Well, there's actually two because 76 to 100 is two, 101 and up is three. So, is there is there are a lot of seniors too that have um, the signage on there uh, to have accessible parking? And I tell you, it's it's a difficult. There's a lot of people with disabilities that go to the game, and uh, although most of them take transit, um, apparently. If you don't go an hour before, it's full. Yes, Peg. I just wanted to say that a lot of the people we support take mobility bus because they can't get parking spots that they can easily access the building. Um, and unfortunately, mobility bus only runs. They can't watch a full game. They have to leave before the game. Please. And I want to remind everybody, turn off your phones. <laughs> Sorry. Roger. Should we consider um, a motion to make the mobility bus run later on game night so that those that require the mobility bus have an opportunity to watch more of the hockey game, if not all of it? Yeah. Well, what, what's the difference? Bonnie? I'm not sure how that would work because they run the same as the city buses. Well, it doesn't hurt to ask, I guess, but I mean. They don't stay out as late, do they, Bonnie? Yep. They're the very same hours as regular transit, but they've been the same hours for, I think, three years now. It was a mandate that came down from the province that transit buses, I mean, um, parallel transit buses have to have the same hours as city buses. Did you have a comment, Diane? I wasn't sure if I saw your hand. No, I I just thought it was a great idea, but I I remember the mandate. Peg, that's too I bad. Have a question for Peg, actually. Peg, do they? Um, they're only taking one customer at a time on, on the buses, the, the mobility bus right now. Do they use all of their buses on a Friday night? I'd have to double check with some of our staff that go currently during COVID, um, but I do know that they'll take more than one of our people that we support because they have to take their staff. Um, and if they're all going from the same household, there could be multiple individuals that live together that go. Um, I'm not sure if that, I'm not sure if that's an exception, but because I I, um, I take the mobility bus and I have never there's never been anybody they only pick up one at a time at least during the day. Used to be a lot at the game I've seen them, uh, Bonnie. I'm just gonna say, I'll make a motion that we have Michael Mosley look into the possibility of running a bus late on game nights in Stratford on Friday night. Okay. Okay. okay do I'll I... second that. All right. Everybody... It's a little difficult, Please... right? Because games will always end at different times, right? Oh, yeah. It could go into overtime. Okay. Casey? We can't pass motions to direct staff to do stuff. We oh. have to send it all to council. So I'll just word it that we request council. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. You can do it. <laughs> All right. So everybody got that motion? You want to reread it? Or are we good? It's good. I think I interrupted. I didn't let you get as far as a seconder. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sorry. Hey, Diane seconds it. 
Okay, any more discussion? All in favor? Good. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay, any more discussion on the parking issues then? Okay, we're good. Report and council, anything, uh, Bonnie? Sorry, oh, Dan? Oh yeah, do you wanna, do you wanna go now, Dan? Or do you wanna stick around? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't need me anymore, sure. <laughs> Hey, thanks. Dan. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye. And Taylor, yes, you stay for me. You all good? Okay. Yeah. Bye. Good. Thanks. Bye. Good see you. Okay. Anything on from council that's come up lately about accessibility or that we should be aware of? I don't think so. I don't know. If you know anything? I've sent you an email about. I don't think there was anything else. Okay. I just think. Okay. No. Okay, so um, I imagine, oh, yes, Lori. So I'm just wondering, because we sent a motion to council about the um, tax break. <clears throat> so I'm, I don't know, Bonnie, would you have heard about that yet? Or what is the timeline for something like that? Does anybody know? You're talking about That's going to take a while because we're just getting into budget meeting. And I know that Dan has um, also sent it along to the... Um, like I forwarded the stuff that I had to the treasurer and Dan sent a message to her from, I forget who it was now. Somebody had sent in an email about it. Maybe it was Diane and he had forwarded yeah. that to, to her, but that will, I don't know if it'll come out in budget or not because um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Sorry. Not a very good answer, but that's all I know right now. Diane? I emailed Dan um, this morning, so uh, I'm sure he'll get back to me, and I will let everyone know what what he says. Okay. So, Bonnie, you don't know if there's any discussion that's gone on about that or anything amongst counselors? I can uh, send out an email if I hear anything, and I haven't... I didn't, I was only on the budget for about 40 minutes and I haven't watched the whole thing yet. So something might've came up there that I went, might have missed too. Yeah. I'm going to try to get that done later today. Yeah, A lot of developments are going up and uh, it's not a good situation. Okay. Everybody good on that? All right. Number 11, business arising from previous minutes. The I don't want to pronounce it F-A-D-M, but uh, Tatiana, are you there? To the chair, yes, good afternoon, happy new year. Um, at this time, I do not have a, a further update to provide. Um, I guess with that change, which is uh, the door, which we uh, might as well include here with new business, uh, accessible doors and washrooms, they, they we, I don't know, Roger, if you are familiar when we did working on that manual too. The washroom stall doors go in. Bonnie cut that. And um, that's not a good thing. Did you ever notice that in the manual? Anybody noticed that before? No, it's not. It has that's it one way one in one picture and another way in another picture. So whether they do it like that because of the room or whatever, we should right. have had Taylor stay on for this. Oh, it was even, yeah, well. Tatiana, are you aware of that, that the stall's door go in on one of the pictures? Uh, through the chair, no, I'm not. And I think this would be a question for either our chief building official or our director of infrastructure and development services. Uh, this is more their area of expertise than mine. Okay, so do we have to invite them for a meeting to talk to it, or is there some way we can do it without a meeting? If there is a specific, sorry, through the chair, if there's a specific question or information the committee is looking for, we can certainly uh, circulate a communication to them and see what information can be provided. Yeah, that'd be good. We, we don't want to have to go through the process of inviting them to a whole meeting for one question. It looks like a drawing error. Um, I don't know, Bonnie? Why don't I forward um, it to Tatiana, what I forwarded to you? I don't know if I sent it to everybody or not. He sent it to me, I know that. But I saw it, we both saw it at the same time. We were doing a review of some washroom and that was 
I, I know I can't stand it when a door goes in into a stall. It wasn't, was it an accessible unit? We were doing the review of the tourism washroom and the yeah. door was going in. One door was going in and one door was going out. Right. And then I looked it up under the FADM and I went, oh, that's what the picture does. Roger. From that old house washroom, um, both of the accessible stalls in the male and the female, they, the doors were swinging out, which is what we prefer, right? What right. Um, the general population would prefer as well. Um, it, it had to do, the conversation came up with uh, the standard stalls, doors swinging in. If we just made the, the minor change so that those doors swung out, then that would make standard stalls much more accessible for anybody who uses them. I think that's how it all came up. Right. And unfortunately, we looked at the manual and found it in our manual that was going in, which is, yeah. was a surprise. I guess we don't watch our manual enough. <laughs> okay, uh, great. So there's nothing more on the, the manual itself, Anna. You got Judy or Diane. I guess there's nothing really to report then. Um, I was so just thinking about um, the regular size stalls. It's it's safer for in in regards to smacking somebody when you swing the door out. Yeah, Bonnie. Up at the Rotary Complex, they all were going in, and when I was attending my the hockey games for my grandson, um, people were always complaining to me about it. So I went and saw like when you open the door, you almost hit the toilet. So like they were saying that they're running, you know, say one of their kids got sick or something, had to go to the bathroom real bad. By the time they got in there and shut the door, because they had to sort of go around the toilet. So I had asked them to extend the um, uh, the wall partition things. I think it was going to be like $3,000 a wall or something. But anyway, somebody else in council suggests, why don't you just change the hinges? So we just change them. If you go in the order complex, they all open out. And I mean, you never have heard of people in there, well, maybe at one, maybe between games, but people just open the door slowly. And I've seen that happening more and more. Yeah, well, if we get the manual changed, then we won't have that problem. So appreciate that, Tatiana, if you can send some sort of message to the staff saying, oops, we made a mistake or we missed something and make sure they don't start doing that. All right, any more discussion on that? Great. All right, the annual accessibility award presentation update, Roger. Yeah, um, so it was on December 13th, we presented at council, um, the Bruce Hotel with the accessibility award for 2022. And then Peter and I went for a follow up on the Wednesday, which was the 15th um, and had a picture in the paper and on the city website, as well as an uh, article. So we got a bit of uh, exposure and press and um, congratulations to the Bruce Hotel on that. And we'll uh, start thinking about who the 2022 um, nomination should be for the committee. You guys took great pictures of that too. Well, survived it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some really bad pictures. I went on diet right after I got my picture at the barn. Anyways, that's the side point. Um, yeah, and what I was really impressed was Galen Simmons was there and he, or the reporter for the Beacon Herald said, if there's anything you guys need, he's willing to do something for us. So that's a good point. So it's always you know, a reporter that's very interested in what we're doing. And that's a good thing. So I think a lot came out of that. Thanks, Roger, for doing an excellent job. Appreciate it, especially at the last minute. So we addressed number 12 already, and the agenda is over. Is there anything else that people want to? Yes, Lori? Um, I, I was um, reading The Globe this weekend, and they had a an article on, on these different people who have done some good stuff. Anyways, there's one gentleman who's part of a group called Disability Without Poverty. And 
Um, they have a petition going um, that's going to the federal government asking for a living wage for all people with a disability. And the petition ends January 11th. So what I will do is I'm just gonna email that, um, actually I'll email a link to the website. Maybe I'll send it to Casey and if she could send it out to everyone and then you can look at the petition and see if that's something that you'd be interested in signing. I think it, um, I've, I've signed it already. I think it's a really valuable um, petition and the site is incredible. Like what their whole philosophy is, is, is great. So I just want to bring that to your attention. Yeah, I've signed it too. I, I think it's really important. I, I know a lot of people that are like extreme poverty and provincially it's tough. So it needs to be federally. And we, get, we keep getting promises as we discussed earlier about sending a letter. I don't know if I ever went out, uh, I don't know, uh, to the original budget over a year ago. And um, they're supposed to be having a Kindred Disabilities Act, but it has no teeth and they're ignoring the people who are consumers, people with disabilities. And they're ignoring the amendments being asked to be made for the Kindred Disabilities Act. So it's really not very sad. And I think they, they actually had done a, somebody had done a survey about um, for the general population to see if they supported this. And they said, I think it was over 80% people supported this idea of people with disabilities earning a living wage, so. Most people with Ontario disability receive approximately $900 a month. I think that's hard enough. But then if you don't have subsidized housing, which is becoming more difficult to get, you may be paying an exorbitant amount of money, so. Um, there's no way to live off of that. And there are people literally getting on the list for assisted suicide as a result of this. So that's a one of the reasons why housing is very passionate for me. I have a house, I'm fine, but I can't stand the thought of people that I know who don't and have to pay these crazy amounts. So um, we can, talk about housing at some point. And I know Diane's been working hard at doing a lot of the work in that area. So thank you, Diane. And I know you're kind of laid up now. I hope it doesn't slow you down too much. Take care of your health. But if anybody's interested in that area, Diane can fill you in if you want to help people get out of poverty. And Lori, if you're, you're on the housing committee and Judy's also on the housing committee. So if there's any, and Pam, if there's anything that you desire that you're passionate about, please let us know. Um, we'd like everybody to be active. And, you know, there's um, lots of issues that we don't discuss because they're under city uh, restrictions. And that's fine. We get, I think we've done a lot over the past year. Um, Tatiana has been an excellent source and a help. She's continually coming out. She's got a huge busy schedule. Thank you, you've made a huge difference in our ability to get things done. And um, I think the past year has been really good people. It, it's, it's the best I've had been on in years. So I really appreciate everybody's hard work. Is there anything else anybody wants to say or other items that are of concern? Since we're like quarter after 12, which would be a record. And Pam, I also want to tell you, this is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Overtime is normal, and, and uh, that's been a problem. But we have a small agenda today. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, everybody puts up there. No, Diane, I think it's first, and Laurie is seconding it. All right. All in favor? Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Casey, you're a star. <laughs>